What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Lumion tutorial for you. So in this video, I wanted to give you a little bit more of kind of a start to finish on creating a model to bring into Lumion. I got a comment last week that it's great that you can create good images using the Lumion default models, um, but it's a lot harder to make them look realistic. Um, using your own models and stuff like that. And so we're just gonna do kind of a simple model here and see what we can create. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, I'm just gonna create kind of a simple building. So um, it's not gonna be anything too complex. I'm basically gonna create a shape that, um, it's just gonna kind of stand up like this. And we're just gonna draw kind of a sloped roof. It's gonna be kind of an exterior metal panel kind of building. So we're just gonna draw this face in SketchUp. Then I'm gonna use the offset tool to offset this end, maybe 12, maybe 24 inches. So we're just gonna offset this end about 24 inches. And uh, we'll just move this line down so that these faces kind of merge with the ground here. And so all we're doing in this case, because I don't want to get super complex with this, is I'm going to use the push-pull tool to push-pull this back. I'm going to tap the control key in order to uh, make that create a new face. And we'll say it's going to be 25 feet long. And I'm going to go ahead and reverse this face because you always want that face facing outward. And then what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'll push pull this out a little bit because we've probably got maybe a 24 inch recess on the side here as well. And so then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this face, right click on it, and I'm going to make it a group. And then inside that I'm going to use the extension lattice maker in order to add glass in here. So we'll set our lattice material to, in this case I'll set it to black, we'll set our pane material to glass and we'll click OK. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to kind of portion off this face so that we can use Lattice Maker, which is an extension, in order to create our glass in here. So basically I'm showing it where the mullions are gonna be in my glass. So we'll just come in here and we'll select all these different faces. We'll activate Lattice Maker and we'll set our lattice material to black and our pane material to glass. And basically what this extension does is it creates basically a lattice that has a piece of glass inside of it. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna make a copy of that using the move tool in copy mode to the back side here. We'll push pull this another 24 inches and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make all of these edges into a group. And so what I'm gonna do with all of those edges is I'm gonna apply a metal panel material to them. And one thing you need to note though when you do that is let's go ahead and let's add this metal panel. And uh, this metal panel is going to be, um, this is a metal panel material that I downloaded from the website polygon.com. And basically what I can do with this, or what's great about the materials from polygon.com is they come with What's great about the materials from polygon.com is they come with different normal maps and other things that you can use in order to make this material look more realistic. And we're going to have to adjust all of this in Lumion. The one thing you need to do though, when you think about materials in Lumion, is you need to break up your areas and also you need to break up your materials. Because if you remember, when you adjust something, um, when you adjust a different material in here, it allows you to select objects by materials. And so these materials on these faces, because they're gonna have to be mapped a little bit differently, and they're gonna have to face kind of this way as opposed to straight up and down, you need to go ahead and have those in there as their own materials. And so in this case, what I'll do is I'll just put a placeholder in here of some kind of cladding on these two and then another kind of cladding over here. And the only thing I'm doing is I'm putting a placeholder material on those that I can then go in and replace in Lumion. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a concrete slab here. And we're gonna give this whole thing a little bit of thickness because it's gonna sit on the ground in Lumion. So we'll give this a thickness maybe of like six inches or something like that. And you can go ahead and you can push pull these edges out. There you go. You can go ahead and reverse this face so the proper side is facing out. And you can also, I'm going to hide this glass for a second. 
I'm basically going to break this slab up and then apply a separate material to the interior and the exterior so that I can edit them separately in Lumion. So you can see how what I'm doing in here is I'm just applying different materials that I can then replace within Lumion. So now I'm gonna do an edit, unhide all. And so now I think this is pretty much ready to go. The nice thing about this is you can always reload it after you've made changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this simple building. I'm just gonna do a file, save as, and now this model is saved. And so just a quick review, what I've done is I've come in here and I've created this simple model. I've applied materials in here and every single face that I think might need a different material in Lumion, I've applied a different material to it. And uh, now I think we're ready to go. The nice thing about this, whoops, the nice thing about this, like I said, is we can go back and make changes in a bit if we need to. So we're going to go ahead and do a file save. Now we're going to get to the next part, which is actually working in Lumion. Okay, and so tip number one when we do this is you don't have to recreate the wheel on everything. So I'm not going to go through and create a brand new complete background image in this case. I'm actually going to use something that's been provided to us in an example model. So again, I'm going to pull in this Farnsworth house model. You could pull in one of the others as well, but the nice thing about this is you can actually delete out the Farnsworth house model and then use the landscape and everything else in the background. So use the stuff that you have in order to create the stuff that you need. So you can see how this is in here in Lumion right now and uh, it's already got the great landscaping and the trees. Well, we're actually going to use that. We're going to utilize that. In a future video, we may go through and talk a little bit more about these settings and looking at why exactly this is so realistic with the like materials on the ground and everything else. But for right now, all we're going to do is we're just going to use the trash object and we're going to remove out this house. And we're also going to remove out all of these other objects as well. And so when we do that, we're just going to go into move mode and we're going to turn all these filters off because what these filters are doing is it's filtering out all of the different points that you can use in order to trash these out. So you can see how as I turn these filters off, now I can come in here and just remove these objects. And you can actually select multiple objects by dra dragging a box across them and then clicking on the little icons that way. And so we're going to have to delete out some of these other things too. So I'm going to turn off the nature filter and I'm going to remove some things like this grass and we're going to have to clean this up a little bit in a minute. But for right now, let's not delete anything else out. Let's go ahead and bring in our SketchUp model that we created. And so to do that, we're going to click on objects, place object, or sorry, we're going to click on objects, imports, and we're going to click on import new model. And then in this case, we're just going to bring in our start to finish model. It's going to ask where you want to import it to. I'm just going to leave it in main for right now. And I'm just going to click the checkbox. And so that's going to allow us to bring this in and place this in our model. So I'm just going to click in order to place that and probably should have deleted out my default model on this one in SketchUp. But the nice thing is I can go in, erase that out and do a file save. And you may actually be able to get this to update automatically using the live sync. But for this, in this case, all we have to do is just click the reimport model button. And that'll reimport this um, with the changes that you've made. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the height of this up a little bit because we want our slab to be above ground. And we can go ahead and rotate our object. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees. and we'll just move it to the point that we want it to be in. So the first thing you're gonna know is you're getting a whole lot of grass kind of showing through in here. There's a couple different reasons for that. Um, so because this is up above your ground plane, it may need to be up a little bit more. But in this case, there's a couple things we need to do in order to get rid of this. Probably the biggest is you've actually got some grass models in there that you need to erase. And so you can do that just the same way by clicking on move mode and trash object and you're gonna have to delete out these extra leaves and we can place some back in in a little bit but for right now you want to erase out the ones that are kind of conflicting with where your model is so you can see how I was able to trash those and then the other thing we want to do is this is actually putting grass in this location so we're gonna come in with our landscape and we're gonna paint a different material. So instead of there being grass, 
we're going to paint something else right there. And I'm going to adjust my brush size a little bit. You can see how I'm picking something else in order to paint in here. And you can see how as I do that along this edge, you can see how this is, this is painting that material on the ground, but it's also removing the grass that was showing up in that location. So you can see how I can kind of paint out the grass right up against my slab a little bit so that I don't have grass showing up through my slab. And so now we're going to go in and we're going to adjust our materials. So that's the next thing about your workflow is once you bring this in, you need to adjust your materials. And so to do that, we're going to click on the materials section. And you can see how the reason that we brought in these different cladding materials as their own materials is so that we could replace them. So the first thing I want to do before we do any of that is I want to go ahead and adjust this metal panel rectangular um, in order to be a little bit more realistic and so the way that I can do that is I can click on it to select it with the material library and uh, you can go into standard you can double click on that and you can see how this has your color map object in here you can also load a normal map and then the other thing is we have to adjust some of our settings because right now this is a little actually a lot too glossy so we're gonna bring our gloss down so you can see if you turn your gloss all the way up this gets almost mirror like and you can adjust this a little bit if you want to to get a little bit of gloss or you can take it down to about nothing in this case I took it down to about nothing and then what I want to do is I want to load the normal map that came with that material so if you download materials from like polygon.com they have normal maps that um, this will basically load to create like bumpiness and make this look more realistic so in order to do that I'm just gonna double click and I'm gonna go find that normal map so in this case there's a 3k so there's two different files in here. I'm gonna pick the smaller one in this case, but if you're trying to be really detailed, you can pick the uh, heavier one. But you can see how when you do that, all of a sudden, all of these joints are getting rendered a lot more realistically than they would have otherwise. And so you can adjust how strong that normal map effect is by dragging this relief button. And you can adjust the size too if you want to. You can adjust the scale by clicking and dragging here. So this allows you to kind of move things around. You can also place them using like the XY offset if you want to. So you can move them up or down by adjusting that offset. So I'm actually going to split this video up into two parts because it's getting a little bit long. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to rotate and adjust our materials so that they're mapped properly on our faces, as well as some of our export settings and how to export our images using Lumion. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking about this so far. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, as always, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.